Good afternoon and welcome to the town of Vrutki. V-R-U-T-K-Y. Northern Slovakia. I'm going to pair this up with two towns today. Vrutki is the first stop, a town of about 7,000. And then we will head down to Marcin, which is just a couple miles to the south of here and is quite a bit bigger. This is the synagogue of Vrutki right here. So every town in Europe has a central pedestrian area, whether it's a town of 7,000 or a town of 700,000. And Vrutki is no different. Have a little pedestrian zone here, have a little splash pad. Park back that direction. There's also like a cool little rock garden that kind of runs the uh, length of the pedestrian zone here. And you got the Malafatra, which are the mountain range that you see behind us here, or ahead of us, I should say, behind the town. And like every little pedestrian zone, you have your your shop selling uh, beverages and cosmetics. You have a grocery store, a clothing store. And very, very well decorated out here. Here's the rock garden I was mentioning. And it kind of, there's probably six or seven of them. And these little pedestrian zone here. There's also a church steeple I saw. I'll try to find it maybe up here around the corner. That if it's easy enough to get to, maybe take a walk down there and take a look at it. I have a smokeless tobacco store, a textile silk store. As you come right into here, you have uh, several restaurants. There's a Pilsner pub, which seems to be every town that I've seen in Slovakia has got a Pilsner pub. Usually it's just a, uh, a uh, place where you can get Czech and Slovak type food, which is pretty heavy. It's pretty much uh, meat and potatoes. And then a few pints to go alongside of it if you're uh, so inclined. So this pedestrian zone will take you right back into the uh, main train station. I'm going to go look and see if I can't find that church steeple. And I think it's just a block or two this direction. So let's go find it. We'll walk this way. I'm going to make the obligatory stop at the grocery store when I saw... Well, there's one on the way. This is the uh, Paris Church of St. John. Here in Vrutki. And it looks like it's open. So we're going to sneak across here if we can hold off the traffic. The Vag River runs right through town here. And there's um, it's about three kilometers to get to Martin. So you can take a train, you can take a bus. I think I'm going to take the path down the river. Let's see what that's like. This little seating area out here. 1906. I believe it was when the uh, church was constructed. That's a Baroque style, if you're interested. Normally you're not allowed to uh, photograph the inside of the church. And I always try to respect that rule. Sometimes I might sneak a quick one if it's uh, not crowded and there's nobody in there actively uh, worshiping. And sometimes you don't have any signs up at all. This is maybe like a little back entrance here. And you got some laundry out, so I'll see if uh, see if we can't get inside, take a quick peek, and it's going to be down the road to Martin. 
Beautiful day here. As I'm walking down the river heading towards the town of Martin, I'm passing by all these apartment buildings that all look exactly the same. And if you're a history person at all, Slovakia was behind the Iron Curtain until the fall of the uh, 1991 when the Berlin Wall came down, basically opening up the east and the west. But I think what you're looking at here are apartment buildings that were built when um, Slovakia would have been under Soviet rule back in the latter part of the uh, previous century. Which also gets me thinking about my Kofola drink and maybe a little bit of history regarding that. So the drink Kofola is a uh, soft drink that is real popular in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. You gotta look at the Vag River flowing ever swiftly here. Uh, how it was founded, from my understanding, is in 1959, I believe was the year. It was the Czechoslovakic Research Institute of Medicinal Plants in Prague. Say that five times fast. Uh, they were looking for a way to utilize the caffeine that was left over after roasting coffee and they created the syrup which became Kofola and it was their way of producing a drink that would rival uh, western soft drinks uh, mainly Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola which became very uh, widely available and quite popular in the 60s and I think Pepsi was a little bit later than that Kofola today <coughs> rivals the sale of uh, Coke and Pepsi, <coughs> at least in the Czech Republic and uh, Slovakia. <coughs> I think I inhaled a uh, <coughs> cotton ball there, but um, Kofola compared to Coca-Cola has two-thirds the calories, two-thirds the sugar, and 50% more caffeine, so go figure that. Uh, but it is quite tasty, and uh, that can I bought was only 69 cents. So, Gofola, readily available, readily affordable. We're going to walk to Martin. Check out this little traffic jam walking into the city of Martin. Because the train tracks are blocked off. The gates are down, but there hadn't been a sight of a train for about 10 minutes. Now it's starting to back up. Just your luck, you got off work early, thought you were gonna be home before everybody else and you get stuck by a gate on the train track. Guess we could always go into the wine store. <laughs> All right, we'll keep trying to get into the city. Well, our three kilometer walk along the uh, Vag River has brought us to the memorial to the Slovakian nation and the Lutheran church right on the edge of the pedestrian zone here of Martin. We'll take a look, quick walk through the pedestrian zone. The pathway on the river came up the entire length from where we started. And there's a shopping center right along the way, so I pause there for a quick coffee. And uh, now some brightly colored buildings here. This looks like maybe like a schoolhouse, maybe. Got some little artwork up there in the windows.
think there's a park down here somewhere in the uh, center of town. It's actually called the park in the center. Not very crowded out at this juncture. It is about 4 p.m. That's not going to stop a few folks from enjoying a pivo out here on the uh, square. It looks like it's a uh, clock and jewelry store there in the yellow building. And of course, like every European city, big or small, this one a little bit bigger, 55,000 people, I think, if you uh, go by Wikipedia live here in Martine. And you kind of stroll through the uh, middle area through the trees here. This is quite nice. Not crowded at all. The mall was not crowded at all. I spent three euro on a cappuccino XL. That's your big boy. Here's some noise back that direction. Looks like maybe it might be a skate park. A little outdoor patio here. Have a uh, cocktail or dinner, whatnot. All right. Not quite as uh, large of an area. Of course, I just came into it as, say, Jolino or uh, Trinchine. But there might be more as we go through to the other side, of course. All right. We'll continue on here and explore the town of Martin. So as you walk down to the other end of the square, it's a pretty lengthy uh, pedestrian zone. I would put it probably 10 to 15 minutes to go end to end. But you get down here to the uh, St. Martin Church, as uh, well in addition to a, uh, another shopping mall, which I think I'm going to go into the mall, see if I can't find a Bankomat ATM machine. I am a little light in the Euro right now. And then maybe uh, find somewhere to grab a little dinner. Looks like there's quite a few options of uh, restaurants and pubs through that little uh, pedestrian zone there. And maybe we can find a pleasant garden to sit out and uh, enjoy the afternoon. So we're going into the Galleria, hunting for uh, a banco mat, and then back into the pedestrian zone. Okay, mission accomplished. We were able to get 40 euro out of the banco mat. Um, if you are a traveler and you need to take out money, always decline the conversion opportunity because any ATM is going to ask if you want to uh, withdraw those funds in your home currency mine being dollars um the euro to dollar exchange right now is uh eh, nine ten percent so my 40 euro cost me 43 dollars and change if you accept the, the currency conversion by the atm it would have been 48 dollars uh so almost a five dollar difference which doesn't sound like a whole lot when you're taking out a small amount like that but let's say you were taking out 400 euro uh we're it would have cost you $430 compared to $480, all for just the uh, all for just the pleasure of saying that you had the bank withdraw the money in dollars instead of euros. This is actually the park in the center that I was talking about before. Got a little monument back there to the tree. There it is. Yeah, we'll a better look at it there. Also, last tip I can give you is there's always a free ATM somewhere for the most part. Uh, the two I tried to do in the mall, the first one wanted a two and a half euro fee uh, to withdraw money. I declined that. Then the next one I found wanted five euros. I declined that. And then I found a uni credit bank. I've had a lot of success with them in the past of not charging, not charging fees. So. 40 euro, $43 and change, no fees to go on top of it. All right, so we're back in the center here. I think it's time to find a little bit of food, maybe a beer, 
and a uh, very good afternoon from Martin, Slovakia. Very cool town at the base of the mountains. I saw some pictures before behind the tourist building right here of uh, some snow cap up there. I think they get a lot of snow in this area come fall and winter time. No chance of that today though. We're in the middle of summer. Good day from Slovakia.